received this medicines first time from the fox glove plant so the flower the shape of the flower of this plant is like a fox glove that's why we call them the fox glove plant and from this fox glove plant we have derived a drug known as digitoxin and later on we have modified it and the drug which is left in the market these days is known as digoxin right so this is cardioglycosides which are derived from fox glove plant the drug is digoxin now digoxin is a very unique medicine this medicine has two mechanism of action right so whenever i give digoxin to a patient this medicine has two mechanism of action we'll, we'll discuss these mechanisms one by one first mechanism of action is seen on cardiac muscles so this medicine will act on cardiac muscles and when this medicine will act on cardiac muscles on cardiac muscles this medicine is inhibitor of sodium potassium atps pump so this medicine is inhibitor of sodium potassium atps pump by acting on the cardiac muscles so by inhibiting the sodium potassium atps pump this medicine will increase the calcium in the cardiac muscles and when this calcium will increase in the cardiac muscle this will increase the force of contraction so this will increase the force of contraction and ultimately the cardiac output will increase and the drug is used as an inotropic drug so for your neat pg this much information is enough but for inct they can trap you like how how by inhibiting sodium potassium atps pump the medicine can increase the level of calcium so for this you have to go into detail for neat pg please remember the drug is sodium potassium atps blocker increase the level of calcium and increase the force of contraction and the cardiac output is increased this medicine is a non competitive blocker this drug is a non competitive blocker of sodium potassium atps enzyme so before that we have discussed a drug in topic of kidney acetazolamide which is non competitive blocker of carbonic anhydrase enzyme and now we have discussed the second drug which is a non competitive inhibitor of sodium potassium atps enzyme guys for this you have to understand the action potential of cardiac muscles so if i talk about the action potential of cardiac muscles then i will draw the action potential of cardiac muscles like this way so action potential of cardiac muscle will be like this so action potential of cardiac muscle will be like this and why this happens so this action potential has four phases so this is known as phase 4 this is phase 0 this is phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 and again we have phase 4 now this phase 4 is known as the rmp phase 4 is known as the rmp now phase 0 is known as the depolarization phase 0 is known as the depolarization and phase 1 2 and 3 are known as the phase of repolarization right now depolarization is because of sodium entry so when the sodium will take entry the muscle get depolarized but when the potassium goes out of the muscle the muscle get repolarized so sodium will take entry potassium goes out then the muscle get repolarized so guys here you have to understand if i say this is my cardiac muscle this is my cardiac muscle now this cardiac muscle will get a current from the previous muscle so we have a previous muscle right so these cardiac muscles have special type of junctions in between them so these muscles have special type of junctions in between them and those junctions have leaky channels those junctions have leaky channels and because of those leaky channels the current which is present in a previous muscle is shifted to the next muscle right so the connections between cardiac muscle is very unique we call them the leaky channels and from those leaky channels the ions from the previous muscles are shifted to the next muscle right so what happens when the current will shift over here in the form of ions the sodium channel will open when the sodium channel will open the sodium will start taking entry inside it so initially the muscle is at rmp the muscle is not contracting the moment the current has reached over here the ions have reached over here right so sodium will start taking entry and when this sodium will start taking entry now we have a phase of depolarization guys have you understood this point normally kya hai the muscle is at rmp when the muscle is at rmp the muscle is not firing now these muscles have some leaky connections in between them they have a special junctions in between them so when the previous muscle is depolarized when the previous muscle is depolarized this muscle has got sodium ion now some of the sodium ion will take entry in the next muscle so some of the sodium ion will come from the previous muscle and when this sodium ions will come from the previous muscle now this muscle will start getting positive gradually so muscle which is at rmp will not fire but once the sodium will take entry from the previous muscle the muscle will start going towards the positive side 
and once this muscle will start going to the positive side immediately the sodium channels will open up once it reaches the threshold immediately the sodium channels will open up and lot of sodium will take entry now so this threshold this threshold that we require for the sodium channel opening this will come from the previous muscle so this is the beauty of our heart so previous muscle will give some potentials and now the muscle will reach the threshold lot of sodium channels will open and the muscle get depolarized because of the sodium entry now after that what happens the potassium channels will open and the potassium started going out of the muscle so when the sodium has taken entry the muscle become more positive and this sodium will push the potassium which is present inside the muscle and now the potassium has started going potassium has started going out the muscle will started getting repolarized now apart after this whatever sodium has taken entry after this what will happen whatever sodium has taken entry this sodium has to go back outside and some of the sodium will now shift it to the next muscle so some of the sodium which has taken the entry will shift to the next muscle and the potassium is shifting the potential is shifted to the next muscle so in this way the potential will travel right now this muscle has this property where the current is traveling so current is traveling from one muscle to the other muscle this is known as dromotropic property this is known as dromotropic property we also call it conduction velocity or the conduction in the heart so conduction in the heart is due to this Purkinje fibers bundle branch. So I'm talking about the bundle branch and the Purkinje fibers. So bundle branch and Purkinje fibers, they are responsible for this conduction of the current in the ventricle muscles as well as in the atrial muscles. Now apart from this conduction in the heart, these muscles also have to contract. Now if you look at my hand, if you look at my hand, when the current is reaching the muscle, on one side the muscle is getting depolarized on the other side this muscle also has to contract so muscle has to do two things number one it has to receive the current and shift it to the next muscle right and also when the when this muscle will receive the current this muscle also has to contract this is known as force of contraction also known as inotropic property so this muscle has one more property that is inotropic property now try to understand guys the currents have started from SA node. So SA node is the one that has stimulated the current. Now which receptor is present on the surface of SA node? The answer is beta 1 receptor. So that we have discussed already. On the surface of SA node we have the beta 1 receptor. So whenever the adrenaline and the noradrenaline will act on beta 1 receptor, SA node will start the current. This will reach to the muscles and now the muscles will keep on conducting the current from one muscle to other muscle. In this way the potential will travel. Now the same beta 1 receptor is also present on the cardiac muscles. So same beta 1 receptor also present on the cardiac muscle and the same adrenaline and noradrenaline which is acting on the cardiac nodes. The same adrenaline and noradrenaline will also directly act on the cardiac muscles. The potential is traveling by its own. SA node has just initiated the current. After that it is traveling by its own. But the muscles are also directly stimulated by the adrenaline and the noradrenaline. So this beta 1 receptor that will increase the level of cyclic AMP. Now this will open up the calcium channel. This will open up the calcium channel and now this calcium will take entry. And when this calcium will take entry in this muscle, this calcium will act on an organelle. We call it sarcoplasmic reticulum. So calcium will act on sarcoplasmic reticulum. So calcium which will take entry will act on sarcoplasmic reticulum. Now in this sarcoplasmic reticulum already the calcium was stored. Already some calcium was stored in sarcoplasmic reticulum. So this calcium will also stimulate the sarcoplasmic reticulum and now both the calcium will take entry in the cytoplasm. Both the calcium will take entry in the cytoplasm. So assume 50 calcium has come from outside and the 50 calcium is already stored in the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Now the total calcium will become here 100 and now this 100 calcium will cause contraction of the muscle. So guys, have you understood? So there are two properties of the heart. One is known as inotropic property, which is possible due to the calcium. So calcium ion is responsible for the inotropic property, which will help this muscle to contract. And what happens in this property? Whenever we have a sympathetic stimulus present in the body, this will act on the beta 1 receptor of the heart. And when this beta 1 receptor is stimulated, this will increase the cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP will open up the calcium channels. 50 calcium will come from outside, entered in the muscle. And the same 50 calcium will also help the more 50 calciums to come out from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Total calcium will become 100. That is required for the normal contraction of the heart. And now the heart muscle will contract. 
side by side what is happening side by side the current is received from the previous muscle in the form of sodium and now the muscle membrane is also getting depolarized and potassium is going outside the membrane is getting repolarized so two properties are taking place together and because these two properties are taking place together if you look at the potential so phase zero is typically only due to the sodium but in phase one potassium channels are open when the potassium channels are open this potential is coming down now what happens in phase two in phase two here the calcium will also open up so calcium will also open up potassium is still open so calcium will try to depolarize the membrane and potassium will try to repolarize the membrane when the potassium goes out the positive charge goes out the membrane will start getting repolarized but when the calcium is taking entry on one side the calcium is taking entry the positive charge is taking entry on other side the positive charge is going out so the balance is maintained over here when the balance is maintained over here we will get a plateau this is known as plateau phase so the potential will not move in any direction we call it plateau phase but ultimately what will happen when we have excessive calcium accumulation that will take place in the cytoplasm when excessive calcium will take place in the excessive calcium accumulation will take place in cytoplasm now the calcium entry will start getting stopped this is a natural phenomena like if you already have calcium in the muscles the more calcium will not take entry